What it do, YouTube, man? What's up, Jits? The boy, here. Just about another video. My nigga, about another fucking reaction. Welcome back to my motherfucking channel. I've never seen anything like this. Jimmy High Roller. You know, it was a, you know it was a great day, four days. I don't even... What was four days ago? Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Friday. So you posted this on Friday? See, man, I've been going too long, but my dog Jimmy posted a video, and I, and I didn't even react to it, bro. I've never seen anything like this. I don't know what he talking about, uh... I don't know, like, you feel me, what the video is going to be about. Like I said, I haven't seen nothing like it. I haven't seen it. Uh, if I'm not if I'm not making a reaction, bro, I'm not watching YouTube. I'm I'm, I'm playing the game. You feel me? I'm out. I might watch some Hulu, some Boondock, freaking Morty, you feel me, some anime. Nigga not watching YouTube, bro, unless he's like, um, feel me? You feel me? You get where I'm coming from. I might watch YouTube here and there if I'm not making a reaction, but it's not like I'm really just sitting there watching other niggas' lives and all like that. Hell nah, nigga, I be worried about me making my videos and other shit. Not fucking, like, you feel me? So that's just that's just me, but I've never seen anything like this. Uh, we finna see what Jimmy Howell talk about, your boy Bat, back in the building. Bat making these motherfucking videos, been going for too motherfucking long. We just got done reacting to uh, YB and Nicki Minaj's new song, uh, what... Who the fuck? What the fuck? Whatever that shit called. W T W T F. That shit was mid to me. Don't get mad at me, y'all. Y'all young boy fans, young boy stands, because I said this shit was mid, bro. That's just my opinion, man. But we finna see what Jimmy Howard was talking about. Y'all boys tap in, like, comment, subscribe, and enjoy the video. Let's get to this motherfucking reaction. Let's see. Hope you boys having a good little day on this beautiful Tuesday. Well, it ain't. It, it's 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 nice, but it ain't like you feel me how you is. The host doesn't stay with you. Raining because without privacy, you're the king. So I don't know how it is. It isn't really you at, my nigga, but that's how it is by B. Is it? And yeah, yeah. Hope you boys having a blessed day. And yeah, yeah. Let's see what Jimmy talk about, man. Your boy. Been we are now in the final stretch of the 2023 NBA. If you want to know the whole the whole spiel, go tap into the um, Young Boy and Nicki Minaj video because that's why I said it at. But hey. We are now in the final stretch of the 2023 NBA season. Season and after over. nearly six months. Luca, don't. I don't want to see shit by Luca. Luca is trash. Talk about MVP. Who, nigga? That nigga's trash. Of games, head to head matchups, and some of the best performances we've ever seen. We still don't have a definitive MVP. Usually, NBA. by this point in the season, there's a general consensus as to who the most valuable player is. NBA. But not this you season. Because this season, you we are watching the greatest, deepest, and weirdest MVP race oh, we've ever seen. I say MB. Some people say Today's Giannis, you feel me? You they got the best record in the East. Giannis is... Bro, Embiid is... A fuck, bro. I feel like Embiid has been the most valuable player this season. It To me. Most valuable player this season has been Embiid. I, like, you can say Nikolai, but it's like, bro. That's what... I ain't... I ain't I, I'm trying to, like, figure out the argument. That's what Nikolai do, bro. Nikolai, like, he got Jamal Murray. Like, not trying to say Embiid don't got nobody good by him, bro. His fucking team is real deal trash, if you want to think about it, bro. His second best player is James James Harden. I don't know, but James Harden not saying to me no more. Cause you still got Harden, Maxi. Then look at the rest of the team. Tobias fucking Harris, bro. Like them niggas is trash, bro. Nikolai them is actually good still though. Like I feel like I don't know. I don't know how to explain. It. I don't With know how to explain. With the NBA it. season quickly coming like to a close, the, the don't miss out on seeing your favorite better team defender. live and in person. And we don't need a lot of better passes. But I don't know. Check this out. Just and download the Seatgeek app and Giannis, use the promo bro, 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 code Jimmy. Hey, 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 God damn, I'm mean, this nigga listen, this nigga talking shit. In 2021, the MVP shit. race came down to Nikola Jokic, Joel Embiid, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. In 2022, the MVP race narrowed down to Jokic, hold Embiid. On. Hold on, and hold on, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. This 20, hold on, what? You telling me in 2021, bro, Curry? This the first time, nigga, Curry should have been number one. I told you, I feel like this the only MVP. Excuse me, Nikola. I, I feel like Nikola didn't deserve this one. I feel like it should have been Curry. I, this one, I feel like it should. Next year, I feel like Nikola deserved that one. But in 2022, the MVP race narrowed down to Jokic, Embiid, and Giannis. And this season, three players have distanced Damn, themselves again? from the rest of the league, and those players are once again Jokic, Embiid, 
and Giannis. Bat being a we big man, Lee. Three seasons into this Sabonis? battle of big men supremacy, and the gap between the three of them has only gotten smaller to the point to where we have no idea who should win the coveted award. I but do, it's Embiid. easy to lose sight <laughs> of the magnitude Raise of what these guys are doing night to night. Embiid looks like a Shaq Hakeem hybrid right now, and oh the league God. has absolutely no answer for it. 30 and 15 is just another day in the office for Giannis, and Jokic continues to make the NBA look like a side hobby. NBA fans are spoiled, Dying. so to demonstrate just how dominant these three big men are, here's a list of every single big man in NBA history who finished a season with a PER of 30 or more. <laughs> Will, okay. Will again. Will again. Okay, okay. Damn. Damn. Hold on. Not even y'all goat Kareem. Okay, okay, okay. That shows that shows something. Dave Robinson did, but not even y'all goat Kareem did it. Come on now, Shaq, Shaq, Shaq. We know Shaq, of course. AD, AD, Giannis, Giannis, and B Nikolai, and B Nikolai, Giannis, and B Nikolai. And that's it. A mark that's Damn. only been accomplished in 18 seasons by big men. And half of those seasons belong to Giannis, Embiid, and Jokic. Um, in fact, Giannis <laughs> is the first player in modern NBA history to average at least 31 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists per game. Embiid is the first player in modern history to average at least 33, 10, and 4 a game. And Jokic is the only player in modern NBA history to average at least 25 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 assists. This we nigga is averaging a trip dub? Hold on. What do you mean? Wait, he's the only what? 33, 10, and 4 a game. And Jokic is the only player in modern NBA history to average... Didn't... Hold on. Didn't... Didn't... What? I'm confused. Bro, Russ is in modern NBA history, bro. Russ averaged a triple double. What do you <laughs> Russ averaged like 20. I know he averaged a I know he averaged more than 25 in his triple double days, too. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. So what is he like what? What do you mean? Unless, unless I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm hearing it wrong or something. I don't know. Average at least 25 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 assists. He probably averaged 12 rebounds, yeah. Hell three nah. Historically significant seasons right now. Well, actually, despite the MVP conversation narrowing down to just these three, we're seeing statistical explosions Him. around the league from players who aren't even getting a mention for the coveted award. Oh, to God. put into perspective just no, how well you yeah, have to be playing don't. this season to don't really have a chance at the MVP, the Jason Tatum is averaging 30 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists a game, and he's fallen out of the MVP discussion. 30 nine and five a game a stat line so good that lebron james has never accomplished it neither did michael jordan or kobe or durant or bird or Kawhi. in fact Jason i ain't gonna lie though these niggas get too many foul calls though i'm sorry though bro i, I love today nba game bro but that's the only thing but y'all niggas get too many foul calls because that's one thing like and then y'all be saying how lebron never averaged that bro Bro, LeBron averages is averaging 29 on half less free throws that all these niggas is getting, bro. Think about it like that, bro. Think about it like that. LeBron averages like six free throws a game. These niggas average 12 to 10. And B, like, I know they bigs. I know I understand that. But, bro, some of them foul calls, bro, like, I would just watch something with Shaq, bro. I was just watching something that uh they was, they was explaining Shaq. They were saying how, you know, most of the time you be fouling Shaq, bro. They're not going to call the foul. They're just going to let it play. They don't do that now, bro. Like, you a foul and B, you won't even foul this nigga. You will touch this nigga. He, these niggas getting foul calls and shit, bro. So I kind of feel like that kind of is one of the points, bro. Like, that's that's too much. Y'all, I ain't gonna lie. Y'all do not be lying on y'all to that shit. Too much foul calls. Cause, like, like that shit get Adam annoying, is the bro. First annoying as and fuck. only wing in NBA history to achieve this stat line. And yet, he has no shot at winning the MVP, despite his team having the second bro, best record Jokic in the league. Not be the but one at least bro. Tatum is propelling the Celtics to wins. Because Luka Doncic was the favorite to win the MVP coming into the season, but after losing 14 of their last 19 games, his chances of winning the award have completely evaporated. Turning what His chances of winning the award was gone. <laughs> Midway through the season, nigga, we talking about. But should have been nigga, an he been gone. great season into an utter disaster. Luca is averaging 33 points, 
nine rebounds, and eight assists a game right now. A stat line that has never been accomplished in the history of the NBA. Luka Through points and assists, Luca has generated. I am Rick, and I'm a cancer survivor. What's in your mind is gonna impact Luka, Luka, your body. Luca, he, he and valuable what you can to his team, it. bro. But like, I ain't gonna count y'all trying to. I, I realized some shit when when Kyrie got over that bitch, bro. Luca, I ain't gonna say he too ball dominant. He like he ain't like he ain't like what's it call it, bro? He ain't like he ain't like you feel me like Bird or a Bron. You feel me like. Even with Brian can at least, you feel, but, but Brian more athletic than him. Brian more fast than him. So even when Brian play off the ball, he can, you feel me, catch that bitch and just go. He not a, he not as a good shooter as Luka, but he can just catch that bitch and go. Luka, cause when he off the ball, he not doing shit, though. I realize that, bro. Like, he not doing nothing. He not like Bird. He can just sit there and just knock down shooter like that. But he ain't like that, bro. But so when he just sitting there and dribbling the clock out, he might make some good plays and shit. But y'all be trying to make it seem like Kyrie really the problem in that bit. I'm not going to say the, the whole problem is on Luka or anything. I'm not saying the problem is one person, bro. But y'all, the problem, I don't know, bro. It ain't Kyrie. Y'all be trying to make, make it seem like, oh, Kyrie's the reason why this team's so trash. Blah, blah, blah. It's not, bro. I ain't going to lie. I, I, I don't know the problem, bro. I, I really got to do some more digging, but it's not that. 7% of the Dallas Mavericks. I think some of it, Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd can't coach either, bro. Luka. This season, which know. makes him easily the most potent offensive weapon in the NBA. A nigga, wide he, nigga, look, what's his usage rate? His usage rate's probably like 85%. Gap on even the Nigga, if my usage play. rate is 85%, nigga, I should be the most dominant offensive player in the league. Look at Jokic. Jokic is, bro. Yo, and I see Jokic's usage rate not even that fucking high, Oops. bro. So, in terms of value, Lucas is off the charts, but still not nearly enough to earn him the title as the league's most valuable player. In 2017, the regular season race for the MVP was a close one. Looking back, some people even referred to it as one of the greatest MVP races in NBA history. The four players that rose above the rest of the league that season were Westbrook, Rush, Harden, yeah, yeah. Kawhi, and LeBron. And in terms of game to game impact, these were their game score averages for that season. Westbrook leading the NBA with an average game score of 24.9, with Harden and LeBron just slightly trailing him. But over the last six years, the game has changed. A lot. Because Whoa. here are the game score leaders from this season. Five players, all topping Westbrook's MVP season. The standard for what we expect from the league's most valuable player has never been higher than it is today. So with the MVP coming down to the wire, how will voters decide who will win the award? Well, on Basketball Reference, there's a page called NBA MVP Award Tracker, which uses a model based on previous voting results to try and predict who will win the MVP in the current season, or at least who has the best odds. Man, y'all know how I said this shit should be done, bro. Y'all know how I said this shit should be done, bro. You you gotta tell you gotta take in a lot of stuff. Uh, you gotta take in a lot of stuff when you tell, when you talk about MVP, bro. Like it shouldn't just be like, okay, this man got the best numbers in the league, blah blah blah. Cause like we can say Nikolai, like we, I'm just I'm just gonna use it as an example. Say Nikolai as is like you feel me, Nikolai. He got the I'm not saying he got he got the best numbers in the league. You feel me? He averaging a triple double, 25, 12, and ten, right? But when he playing in B. And B outplay him in all their and like if 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 and B outplay Nikola in all their matchups, and B should be the favorite as the MVP, bro. I, that's how I feel like it should be, bro. You can't. I I ain't trying to like. You can't tell me like okay, uh, Giannis dropped 40, 40, 40. Then every time they play in B, every time they play in B or Nikola, not saying he he not doing good, but it's like his his stuff dropping and they losing. You gotta take in matchups too, bro. You can't just look at this shit and be like oh. Well, Nuggets, they're the, they're the number one team in the West. And then Nikolai's average 25, 12, and 10. So he's he, he all his stats are this. So he's obviously the MVP. You can't take that into account because you can look at your best record in the West. But when you playing the 76ers or when you playing the Bucks or somebody like that in the East, y'all getting your ass beat. And B, last time they played, had 50 on them or something like that, right? So it's like you can't really take that into account. You got to take like... You gotta take matchups into account too, bro. Cause you can't just you can be so dominant against other players in the league, but then when you play another dominant player in the league, another MVP candidate in the league, this man outplaying you in all those matchups. That should take into account, bro. That's the way I feel like. So I feel like say if I'm just I'm just using this as an example. Say if Nikolai, you feel me? Like what okay, let's just say you know how Giannis and Tatum played last few games, the few games ago when Tatum beat them by 40 or something like that. 
and then Celtics beat them by 40. Tatum had like 40. Brown had like 30 or whatever. If they if say that them two was the MVP race, right? Them was the leaders for the MVP race. Right there, right that. And I look at, I take it all the count. Okay, Celtics beat the Bucks more times than the Bucks beat the Celtics this season. Tatum is the MVP. He's the he's the clear MVP. He's outplayed Giannis every time they play each other this season. He's the clear MVP. That's how you. That's how I should be looked sometimes. But I ain't gonna lie to you. Bro. That's just my the opinion. The top five MVP that's candidates just my are James Harden with three percent, Jason Tatum with three point six percent, Giannis. This nigga just put James Harden at five. Hold on, what? Let me be quiet. I gotta listen. I, I cause what? Based on previous voting results, to try and predict who will win the MVP. In Based on previous voting results, James Harden gets five, bro. James Harden has has barely done shit in the this current season. season Fuck or you at about? least who has <laughs> the best odds. And at the moment, the top five MVP candidates are James Harden with three percent, Jason Tatum with three point six percent, Giannis with seven point nine percent, Embiid with ten point six percent, and currently sitting at the number one spot is Nikola Jokic with a staggering sixty six point four percent probability of winning the award for the third straight season. But Basketball Reference isn't the only source that has Jokic as the heavy favorite to win the MVP this season. Est Estimated box plus minus is one of the best all-in-one advanced statistics in basketball. An updated version of the tradition. I ain't gonna count. Okay. Basketball reference, y'all fucked me up when y'all had hard and y'all top five will win the MVP. <laughs> Niggas not listening to y'all no more. <laughs> Like, nigga, everything you said went out the window when you had James Harden in your top five for winning MVP this season, bro. Like, what? And what statistics? Like, what, nigga? How? That made Additional no plus fucking minus sense, stat, like, but with far more ass, factors dude. and variables baked into it. And dating back to 2014, when estimated plus minus was first introduced, the league leader in EPM has gone on to win the MVP six of the last nine seasons. And among all players, the league leaders in estimated plus minus this season are Jokic, Embiid, Lillard, Butler, and Durant. Once Dang. again, Jokic having a slight edge over Embiid and a considerable lead above Giannis. But possibly the Damn, most revealing Giannis? metric of all comes from 538 and their Raptor War stat. Introduced to the world in 2019, this predictive model is about as convoluted and elaborate as one can possibly get. I mean, at this point, we're about one step away from a course in advanced mathematics. But to find the purpose of this statistic, look no further than its name. Robust algorithm using player tracking and on-off ratings with wins above replacement. That's too much shit, bro. <laughs> Just call that Raptor War, bro. I don't know what all that robust out. Nah, or bro. A very that's fancy too much way shit. of saying we used every metric under the sun <laughs> yeah, to reveal that's too how much valuable shit. a player is relative to everyone else. It's complicated, but it's good. And in terms of Raptor War, here are the top 100 most valuable players in the league. Towards the bottom, you have players like Jose Alvarado, TJ McConnell, and Tyrese Maxey with Raptor Wars around three. Climb up the charts and the first Damn, player Damn, is that to Levine? Your shit <laughs> Yo shit five? Is Lou Dort <laughs> followed by Austin Reeves and Zach Levine all Damn. around a score of about five. Keep Damn. climbing and you'll find the best players in the entire league. Giannis with a score of nine, SGA with a score of 9.2, 9 .2. Jimmy Butler with 9.3, and Luka Dame Embiid. Embiid and Luca as the only players to crack a double digit Raptor war with scores of 11, 12.2, and 12.3 respectively. Well, actually, Jokic be also has a shit. score in the double digits. In fact, Nikola Jokic has a mark so Damn. high, it looks like a typo. So with all the numbers and odds unanimously pointing at Jokic to win this year's MVP, at this point, this should be all wrapped up, but it's not. In the most recent MVP ladder released by the NBA themselves, the number one spot is actually held by Joel Embiid. I say it is Embiid. Jokic in second. Our friends over at DraftKings have Embiid as the favorite at the moment as well, with a sizable lead over both Jokic and Giannis. But this wasn't the case just a couple weeks ago. For what felt like virtually the entire season, Nikola Jokic was leading the charge for this year's regular season MVP. Well, only had the entire season. Damn, Nikola I ain't gonna lie. At, nah, at one point they had Tatum win that bitch. Tatum was on, then Tatum, Tatum is inconsistent as fuck, man. This nigga have a good ass game and go drop 14 or some shit, nigga. That's boofing fuck, nigga. 
How'd you go fly? You Nikola Jokic was what? leading the charge for this year's regular season MVP. The Nuggets had the best record in the NBA. Jokic's game-changing dominance was as strong as ever. And for the last three months, it felt like his third MVP was all but inevitable. And then it happened. So I didn't know if I wanted to wait to bring this conversation on No Mercy or was it appropriate for first take? And damn it, I'm here so it's appropriate for first take. So let me get... I, let me get us in outside of our comfort zone a little bit when we talk about the MVP conversation. When it comes down to guys winning MVP since 1990, it's only three guys that won the MVP that wasn't top 10 in scoring. Do you know who those three guys were? Who were they? Steve Nash, Jokic, and uh, Dirk Nowinski. What do those guys have in common? I'll let you sit. I'll let it sit there and marinate <laughs> They all <Jimmy>. white. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah, that beats me. Bro, hold on. If he not top 10 in scoring, bro, nah, bro. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, bro. You shouldn't be. Nah, bro. Mo nah, bro. You not top 10 in scoring, nigga. Like, I thought he was top 10. Nah, bro. Never mind. You Shouldn't nah. be, be the MVP front runner. <laughs> okay, well, don't come giving me this stuff about a triple-double. I don't want to hear that. Early in the season, about 30 games, in, 25 to 30 games into the season, he was actually around like, you know, 9.5, 9.8. And then all of a sudden, he started searching for the assists. I told you he'd be stat bad, bro. Yeah, that nigga be stat bad. I told y'all. To get it up above 10. So don't oh come giving me nothing about a triple double. God. And don't come up here telling me about oh, what? Oh, oh what? my God. Are you sitting here and saying Nikola Jokic is having his numbers pad? Is that what you're saying? You heard, you heard what the hell I said. Uh, Stephen, I mean, I mean no offense to you, and I mean no offense to first take. Because I think this show is extremely valuable. It is an honor to be on this desk every day. It really <laughs> is. But what we've just witnessed is the problem with this show. Where we create narratives that do not exist in reality. The implication, what you are implying, that the white voters that vote on NBA are racist. That are they, they favor white people. You I just not, said that. I you just yes, you did. I yes, did you did. Not, I did. Yes, not, you did. That did is exactly not, what you implied, not, Kendrick Perkins. Not, that is exactly not, what you implied. I, I, Secondly, I not, hold on, did, hold on. I did not call. I stated the facts. I stated the facts. And you're not about to sit up. We all know like what you implied the other day. We all know what you implied this time. Hold on. I stated the time. It's the facts. It's the facts. It's the facts. It's the facts. It is fact. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't know that, bro. I ain't know that. It is fact, bro. Only three players that win MVP and they, they wasn't top 10 in scoring, cuz. That is, that is a coincidence. That is, that's a crazy ass coincidence. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. That's a crazy. Hey, but dirt don't count. You feel me? You, could do you, you feel smarter me? Smarter and faster. With Wix, you can edit your meta tags page by page or all in one go. Oh, oh, Modify oh, your oh, URL. I ain't gonna cap, bro. Y'all niggas, stop texting me about, bro, I'm finna, bro, y'all, that's some weird shit, bro, I'm finna start spazzing on niggas, cuz, nigga, I don't even know who you is, talk about, bro, what you texting my number for, talk about a reaction, bro, nigga, bro, what the fuck, nigga, nah, fuck, fuck, weird ass, nigga. In one of the most egregious cases of media bias I've ever seen, Kendrick Perkins goes on national television and completely sabotages Nikola Jokic's potential MVP run with false propaganda. Immediately following these statements, the conversation regarding the most valuable player in the league became diluted with narratives that had nothing to do with basketball. And for the first time all season, the following NBA MVP ladder Featured Joel Embiid with the top spot. The sole I've been thought Joel Embiid was number one, play, number one MVP. Shit. On I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> being Perkins statement. I ain't even know so about this shit. How does a player start the season leading the MVP race, finish the season playing even better, have every metric in the game in their favor, and still get overtaken in the MVP race? Well, if this nigga that shit happened to Brian plenty of times, nigga, be quiet. This entire saga has <laughs> taught us anything. It's that narratives mean just as much as actual merit in the NBA, which we already knew as fans of the game. But to see it unfold right in front of our faces, to watch an entire season get boiled down to false narratives that skew voter thinking, is actually insane.
Value is subjective. Some people value two-way dominance and holding down the best record in the NBA. Some people value offensive mastery and an unstoppable skill set. Others value record-breaking efficiency and unshakable consistency. Three generational players, three all-time great seasons, hey. one MVP trophy. The 2023 NBA MVP race is the most difficult, most loaded, and weirdest MVP race we have ever seen. I ain't gonna lie, I don't know, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who should win MVP. I feel like it sh I think it should be in B, bro, just because of his his pure dominance, you feel me, on both offense end and defensive end. Then I don't know, bro. I honestly, I can't. I just feel like Nikola shouldn't win that bitch three years in a row. I mean, he, what he be doing is crazy, bro, but three years in a row, bro, I honestly feel like he shouldn't win it. I'm not trying to say, oh, he shouldn't win it because he already won it two years in a row prior to that. I, I just feel like this season, this season, I ain't talking about last season, the, the season before that, this season, I feel like Embiid has been more dominant. Embiid is the most valuable player in the league. That's just my opinion, man. But I have never seen anything like this. Jimmy Howard, let y'all boys tap in. Like, comment, subscribe, and enjoy the video. Let me know how y'all feel. Let me know who y'all think should be the MVP. And we out, my nigga. Peace.